Last week, the Montgomery County Sheriff's Office was part of the Police and Youth Together Camp. The National Conference for Community and Justice of Greater Dayton put on the camp for kids 10 to 13. The goal is to establish a better relationship between the community and law enforcement. And just try, trying to show the community, especially our, our younger youth, uh, that we're one of them, uh, we're part of the community, and, and that they can trust us and be with us. If they need us, they can ask for us. The SWAT team created an obstacle course for the kids. There were two more camps, one next month and another in July. Wild to see video from this week of people just enjoying the time outside. No one was enjoying today outside. No, well, some people probably were. I'd say like the Not children they. maybe. Yeah, yeah, but like us, no. No, because there wasn't even enough snow to go sledding or sort of snowball. It was just enough to make the roads slippery. That's, that's, that's a good point, yeah. It was just, it was either not enough for some people yeah. or just too much for some people. Yeah. But it's going to be a little bit too much as far as temperatures are concerned. I mean, for late March, temperatures in the teens, that's in the forecast. Now, you can see most places saw at least a little bit of snow today. This is actually an accumulation map. And so the heaviest parts were these lighter blue areas. The darker parts are just a trace of snow. I know you saw snow falling, but really just only added up to a trace. Maybe a few tenths of an inch where you see some of this lighter color. So it kind of extends from Montgomery County over toward Greene County and a couple other areas. Temperatures now, it's cold. It's below freezing. Dayton's at 30, 29 in Troy. Looks like the coldest is Richmond. Well, we're at 26 degrees out there. We already told you that the roads are a little bit wet. There might be a few tricky spots out there with the temperatures this low and the constant light snow we've seen throughout the day. Now, what we saw earlier was a little bit more widespread flurries, but what we're seeing now, if anything, are just some spotty flurries. And you can expect a chance for a few spotty flurries into the overnight hours, but now we really are transitioning to not only the little bit of ice on the roads, but the cold and the wind, which doesn't make it feel any better. Now, winds have died down at least a little bit, but you're still looking at some winds around 18 miles per hour out of the northwest, which is, guess what, that's where all the cold air comes from. And with the cold temperatures already, it feels even colder than that. It already feels like the teens in Dayton. It feels like 18 degrees in Dayton. It feels like 15 degrees in Salina. So many places already feeling like the teens. And guess what, the temperature is actually going to drop in the teens. Not tonight, but tomorrow night. Now, as the wind chills, as we move throughout the rest of tonight, you can see, yeah, we're going to be in the low teens. That's what it's going to feel like outside. Now, I know, why not show the regular temperature? Why show wind chills? I want to know the real temperature. Well, if you think about it, I, I, I've ex I like explaining it this way. When you step out the shower and you feel cold, even though your house might be comfortably warm, well, it's because whatever water's on your skin evaporates. That evaporation makes you feel cool. It's a cooling process. So it's a similar idea. You go outside with exposed skin. You have moisture on your skin. The wind blowing, it evaporates, makes you feel cold. And when you're already in the 30s or the 20s, it's going to make it feel like the teens outside. And that's not very good for exposed skin for a very long period of time. So be aware, it will be cold cold tonight and very cold tomorrow. Now, taking a look at the future cast, you can see a little bit of blue here. Just some spotty blue areas indicating some spotty flurries possible with some mostly cloudy skies. And we may even see this continue a little bit into the morning tomorrow. By the afternoon, you're going to see a little bit more clearing. You're going to see a little bit more sunshine. And unfortunately, it won't be that much warmer. Temperatures might inch slightly above freezing in the mid-30s, maybe upper 30s. But then we're going to go back to way below freezing. And that's when I'm going to be talking about temperatures in the teens. So tomorrow's high, 36 degrees. And again, maybe kind of a cloudy start, a few spotty flurries early. But we will see a little bit more sunshine by the afternoon. And plenty of sunshine on Monday. And the high is 44, so it is warmer. But look where we start Monday morning, 19 degrees. And then with the wind, we might be feeling like the single digits in a few places. So that is certainly very cold. Getting close to record breaking. We'll talk about that in about 15 seconds. Let me show you the rest of the week, though. You can see the chance for rain also returns. And, oh, uh, yeah, Wednesday, high of 75. Well, that's cool. Not really, but you get the idea. As we move into the weekend, too, it tends to be a little bit drier. And there, that's when we see more seasonable temperatures. With temperatures in the mid to low 50s, lows, maybe a little bit below average, but still feeling a little bit more like late March and early April. So the 19-degree low tomorrow night 
Well, the last time we were that cold was probably still a few weeks ago when it was still winter, but the record low for that day is 16 degrees. So we're going to be getting close to that daily record low, and this isn't completely out of the ordinary to see freezing temperatures because on average, our last freeze is about April 19th. So while it certainly is I'd say it normally cold, it's it's not the worst we've seen. In fact, the latest last freeze was May 21st, and that was way back in 1907, Molly. I wanted to be Roger Taylor.